Welcome to the module Running Kali Linux. In this module I will show you how to configure a fresh installation of Kali Linux to make Kali easier, smarter, and more secure to use. Once you have Kali up and running, you will want to configure and test your network connectivity. If you have already used a web browser and the ping command to verify that Kali is connected to your network and the internet, then you may decide to skip this step. However, it's still a good idea to see what your network configuration is, if only to check what network Kali is connected to and where it's getting its IP address from. On the Kali desktop, you will see the network manager up here on the desktop panel. To get information on Kali's networking, right-click and select Connection Information. You will see one tab per network connection and the IP address and other information for each connection. Verify that your Kali system is connected to the correct network, either wired or wireless, and if it is assigned the correct IP address. If you want to change any networking configurations, select the Edit Connections menu item and double-click the connection you want to reconfigure. The IP4 Settings tab is probably where you want to make your changes, such as manually assigning a static IP address and DNS settings. Click the Add button to enter a static IP address, network mask, and the network gateway Kali will use to connect to its network. And don't forget to click the Save button. You can also add additional networking connections, such as Wi-Fi and network adapter, on your Kali laptop. Click the plus button, select Wi-Fi from the drop-down menu, and click the Create button. You then fill in the Wi-Fi configure information on the Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi security tabs, as you would for any other Wi-Fi client. And once again, don't forget to click the Save button. With Kali connected to the Internet, it's time to update the system and install packages. We have seen in previous modules how to use the Advanced Package Manager, or APT, to update and upgrade Kali and install and remove packages and meta packages. Here's a quick refresher on the most common APT actions. Before performing any installations or upgrades, run APT with the Update action to update the local APT package database. This allows APT to know about the latest packages in the repositories that your Kali system is configured to use. The Upgrade action causes all installed packages and system files to be upgraded to their latest release. The full upgrade option will also uninstall unneeded packages, which frees up space in the file system. The install action is used to install packages and meta packages. The dash Y flag is used to automatically answer yes at all prompts and works with many of APT's actions. I really recommend not using the Y flag, so you can review what APT is about to do and change your mind by hitting the N key. The Remove action is used to uninstall packages and meta packages. The Y flag can make things a little faster, but not using it will give yourself a chance to change your mind about what you are asking APT to remove. And finally, the Auto Remove action will remove all packages that are no longer required by other packages installed on Kali. Again, which frees up space in the file system. You will occasionally need to add users and groups to Kali to better control what user has access to which resources. Adding users and groups in Kali Linux is very simple from the command line. In this example, we will use the add user command to create a user named Pluralsight, a new user group also named Pluralsight, and the user's home directory. We will be prompted to set the new user's password. We will also be prompted for additional information about the new user. You may safely accept all of the default values. Use the password command to change the user's password at any time.
Use the change finger command if you want to change the user information that we skipped over when we created the user. And the change shell command is used to change the user's default shell. If you want a new user to be added to an existing group, specify the group's name in the add user command. The new user plural site 2 has been created and added to the existing group plural site. You can use the user mod program to add the new user to the sudo group to give the new user account sudo rights for executing sudo commands. Removing a user account is performed using the del user command. Del user will remove only the user and leave the user's account home folder and files intact. If you want to remove the user's home folder and all files too, Use the Remove Home and Remove All Files flags. And to remove a specific user group, use the Dell Group command. Kali Linux runs many services as background processes. Common services that you will configure and use include web and SSH servers and database services. Most services are managed using simple commands. Most of the operations you will perform with services are starting, stopping, and restarting using the service command. For example, to start Kali's Nginx web server, we would use the start operation. The stop operation is used to stop the Nginx service. And the restart operation to stop and then restart Nginx. Restart is handy if you've made configuration changes that require a service to be restarted to take effect. Each service will have its own specific set of commands that it obeys. For example, many services have a status command that returns very useful information. If you want to see the command supported by the service, specify only the name of the service and no command. The services command will also show you a listing of all installed services and their current running state. A plus sign shows a service running, a minus sign that it is not, and a question mark indicates the state of the service is indeterminate. Now suppose we want a service to automatically start when Kali boots. We enable and disable the automatic starting of services using the system control command. Note that this command does not actually start the service. It only enables the service to start when Kali does. You will need to either start the service manually or reboot Kali.